So I made a start on uh, installing the um, electronics bits and bobs, all the gubbins, um, the ancillary stuff, and uh, made a start on the wiring as well. It, so it's a little bit complicated because um, I have a DC UPS, um, an uninterruptible power supply, which is a 24 volt one. So it backs up the 24 volt supply. Um, so a couple of 12 volt batteries in series give me 24 volt. Put them into one side of the UPS um, power from the PSU goes in the other side so if the DC from the power supply cuts out then it switches immediately over to battery and it'll keep the printer running but it gets a little bit complicated uh, well for one thing the the um, the bed is heated straight off the mains uh, through an SSR so if power fails then the bed won't be heated but because it's 400 mil square and 10 mil thick and it's got 12 mil of insulation underneath it it takes forever to cool down so it'll take about an hour or something to drop five or ten degrees something like that so i'm not backing that up so if i had a power cut that was you know a couple of hours or more chances are the bed would cool and the part would probably fall off anyway but the 24 volt supply um it is backed up um to prolong the um, the run time on battery as much as possible I want to switch off any non-essential stuff so the easiest way to do that is um, basically things like lights um, and stuff like that anything that's non-essential run off a separate 12 volt supply so that's the second PSU a 12 volt one which is off the mains but it's not battery backed so if power goes off then that goes off so any lights or whatever will will just turn off obviously anything that's 12 volts connected to the duet board because the duet board will be supplied 24 volts anything that's 12 volt running off that will still work so i um i managed to um destroy my other batteries that i had um because it's a funny thing once you've got a ups you kind of forget about it and a few times i've been working on the printer um, not necessarily running a print, but doing things like heater tuning and stuff like that. And I've actually forgotten to turn the mains power on. Um, so I've been running on batteries um, for like hours and didn't know. <laughs> I didn't realise until the batteries got completely flat. Yeah, if you do that too many times, it, it buggers the batteries. Um, they, I think they, they get sulphate on the plates or some such. Um, they're not happy so I had to get a couple of new batteries and because I've got room in this drawer um, this over engineered all metal drawer that I've made um, I thought I can put batteries in there so I bought two small um, UASA 7 amp hour batteries that they use in UPS's so that'll give me 7 amp hours well 7 amp hours at 12 volts I've got them in series at 24 volts so it's still 7 amp hours at 24 volts um didn't sound like a lot but if i'm just running the hot end heater a couple of fans um and the motors um i'd be surprised i mean the hot end heater is say say it's 50 watts that's a couple of amps at 24 volts um but that's only one it's initially heating once it's up to temperature it probably only use about a tenth of that same with motors they're 1.8 amps maximum is what they're set to but they're probably only running about a tenth of that normally um so you know a maximum three and a half amps i would think um so seven amp hours three and a half amps should in theory give me a couple of hours of run time um but that would completely flatten the battery so realistically say an hour of run time to get to 50 percent um, I'll have to run some tests and, and see but for most power cuts that we get um, I mean quite often they're just little glitches of a few seconds but uh, so an hour will be more than enough I reckon um, as I say any longer than that the bed's going to cool down so you're probably going to lose the print anyway but yeah it starts to get complicated because I didn't want to keep buying batteries um, so so I fitted a, an isolator for one thing a DC isolator so I can just isolate the battery so if, if we go away for any length of time visit our family in Australia or something I can just turn them off completely I've also fitted a an automatic cutoff so if the voltage gets below 
um, gets too low, I can't remember what the threshold is I've set it to, um, but they will just switch off, so that should prevent them being over discharged. And then the other thing that can happen apparently with two batteries if they're not, um, they, they should be okay if you buy them both together at the same time, both new ones, which is what I've done. Uh, but you can get a situation where you've got one good one and one not so good, or one highly charged and one hardly charged. And so then if you, um, when you charge them when they're in series, you can overcharge one that's already highly charged in order to get the other one up and so they, that doesn't do them any good either. So I bought a battery equaliser and fitted that as well. So it rapidly starts to become this uh, battery backup. So that's a bit complicated. So I've got the DC UPS, I've got the batteries, I've got a battery equaliser, I've got a, an isolator and I've got an automatic cutoff. So I say then um, non I've got a 12 volt supply for non-essentials like lights and things like that. So they would, you know, if there's a power cut, they'll just go off. And then I've also got a 5 volt supply, which I originally bought for using an SBC, a single ball computer. Um, but I run my computer standalone, so I don't use that. But I might well um, end up with a, I don't know, an ESP module or two to monitor various things like temperature and humidity and stuff and or control the lights. I could put a motion sensor in there so if I walk away the lights will go out, things like that. So 5 volt supply, independent of the, all the duet stuff, uh, is probably going to be useful. I had it anyway, so I might as well fit it. Um, and that actually is a DC to DC, so it's derived from the 24 volt supply. So if, that, if the mains fa fails, the UPS will cut in and maintain the 24 volt, volt supply, which will also maintain the 5 volt supply. So if I've got an ESP doing things or an Arduino or something um, that will stay alive as well. And then on the main side um, because everything's metal, <laughs> the drawers metal, the frames metal, everything's metal I'm just bonding everything to ground. I um, connected all the negatives of the power supplies together and I've connected them to ground and I've got a um, uh, an earth leakage device, an earth uh, like residual current breaker a, double pole residual current breaker. I've also fitted um, sockets, I mean a socket on the back of the printer, it takes like a kettle lead, that type of thing. Um, and the same for the ethernet cable as well, so there won't be any any wires coming out of the printer, they'll just plug in, so I've got like a an ethernet socket cable just plugs in the back and that plugs in and goes to the duet. And in the mains cable, you just plug it in like a kettle lead, but it's wired up internally through the double pole breaker and everything else. So that's about it. Um, as I say, picture picture tells a thousand words. So um, here's a load of pictures. I'll just uh, leave you to um, watch the slideshow now. So uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now.